Amen. God bless you and welcome to Unshackle Ministries here in the city of Paramount. God has wonderful things in store for you this morning because God is an awesome God, a loving God, and a wonderful healer. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Um, so we're ready to worship the Lord today. Today is going to be a day where the Word of God is going to lead us into worship. And uh, we believe that God is going to do great and mighty things this morning in each and every one of our lives. And uh, we thank you folks from uh, Facebook and YouTube and all of you that have been uh, supporting, watching, viewing our ministry. And we pray that God continues to use this ministry to bless you, your family, and your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So um, we've been going through some challenges this last uh, couple of weeks here. And, uh, but God is good and faithful. And uh, he's a, like I said, God is a healing God. So we're healed, we're whole, and we're back to do the work of the Lord and serve him this morning. Amen. We won't be having a live worship this morning, but uh, you just, uh, we'll, get, we'll get back to that in about a couple of weeks. Amen. Um, but today we got uh, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Anthony Archuleta. He's going to be coming up and giving the word of God. So open your hearts. Open your ears, be receptive to the power and the work of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of your lives. Amen? Amen. So praise God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful love and blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's give Pastor Anthony a warm welcome as he comes up this morning to minister to his God. Amen, church. Is it a good day to be in the house of the Lord today? The sun's out, it's shining, it's warm, and it's time to hear God's word. Amen. Amen. If you would, open up your, your Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter 6. Judges, chapter 6. When you're there, say amen. 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 Let's read. Then the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hands of the Midians seven years. The power of the Midians prevailed against Israel. Because Midian, the sons of Israel, made for themselves dens which were in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. For when Israel had sown that the Midianites would come up with the Amalekites and the sons of the east that go against them. They would camp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza, leaving no substance in Israel as well as no sheep, ox, or donkey. They would come up with their livestock and their tents. They would come up like locusts for numbers. Both they and their camels were innumerable, and they came into the land and devastated it. So Israel was brought very low because of Midian. The sons of Israel cried out to the Lord, and it came about when the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord on account of the Midians that the Lord sent a prophet to the sons of Israel, and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, It was I who brought you out of Egypt and brought you out, of, out from the house of slavery. I delivered you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hands of your oppressors and the, uh, disposed of them before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites who, whose land you live, but you have not obeyed me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time and for this word that you've given us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that every person that's listening, Father God, every person that's watching, Lord, that you open up their hearts, Father God. Help them not to be distracted by the things around them, Father God. That you help them to focus on the word this morning, Father God. Let your spirit minister to them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning, this is the prelude to how Gideon comes about 
But as you can see, the children of Israel, they're in a bad place. And they're at a very lowly place. Now, these past two weeks, as we started a new year, we talked about what? We talked about renovating the heart, right? Yeah. Renovating the heart, rebuilding the heart, pulling things out that don't belong in there, putting new things in there to make it strong. Then we talked about last week and how we see things. And using godly eyes to see things and seeing things with faith, not just sight alone. Looking past what's in front of you and seeing the God that's ahead of you. Amen. And so now we look at this scripture and I want to talk about doing. Because remember that scripture we talked about last week? Don't be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. There are too many people that just listen. And don't do. And then they wonder why their lives are in the same place they've always been. Or they keep going around in the circle. Round and round. Things go good. Then they go get bad. And I go follow Jesus again. And they get bad again. And they go back and forth. Back and forth. And they have an inconsistent walk with Christ. And they're not deeply rooted. See steps of faith and action. That's what makes you stronger. And as you can see here. Like the immediate, like the uh, Israel. The Midianites, their enemy is against them. And just like me and you in our lives daily, we have things that come against us. And for us, like the Israelites, they can be innumerable. There's so many problems that come. There's so many difficulties that come. The Israelites were, struck in a, they were stuck in a stronghold. They were living in caves. They were living in the mountains. Not in the land that God had gave them. How many of us are in a place that we shouldn't be at? And not in the place where God has for us. God has a place for us. He gave them a promised land, but they left it because they didn't follow God's ways. And when you don't follow God's ways, you get put in a bad place. And then situations occur. Then when they try to get ahead or they try to feed themselves, what does it happen? Their enemy comes and overtakes them. Right? What did they say the Midianites came and did? They took all their food, right? They wiped it all out. They killed the sheep, the donkey, and the oxen, killed the animals too. They were trying to eliminate them. What do you think the enemy is trying to do to me and you? Don't you think the enemy goes after our heart? Don't you think the enemy goes after what we see? Because what we see can be disheartening at times. It can be discouraging. It can hit your faith so hard that you stumble. But how many know we're going to stumble at times? Amen. That we're going to fall. Maybe time is that the things that come against us may overwhelm us. But it doesn't mean that God isn't watching. And God told them, don't you remember what I did for you guys? I heard your cries. And I brought you out of Egypt. And I brought you out of slavery. How often do we forget the things that God has brought us out of? Or the things that God has brought us through? Or the God, things that God's going to bring us through? See, God is always there. But he tells him at the end of that scripture, But you have not obeyed me. And how many times in our life... Has God given me new instructions to get up and go? And we sit down and we lay. And we don't do what we need to do. Steps of faith build character. Steps of faith increase your faith. Steps of faith increase your wisdom. But if you're not stepping in faith, then you're sitting for the enemy. I know the Bible says to stand firm in your confession of faith. But when you're just sitting there, you're letting whatever it is overtake you. When you're standing firm, you're ready. But when you're sitting down, you can get knocked over by anything. And when you're laying down, you can be stepped on by anything. Let's look at Gideon and what happened in his life. He goes on to say, then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak that was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abizarite, 
as the son of as his son Gideon was beating out the wheat in the winepress in order to save it from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, "The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior." Then Gideon said to him, "O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of the Midianites." The Lord looked at him and said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the, from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And he said to him, O Lord, how shall I deliver Israel? Behold, my, my family is the least of Manasseh. I am the youngest of my father's house. But the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. What's going on here? The charge has come to Gideon, hasn't it? The Lord has found him where he's, where he's at. And is he at a good place? No, he is hiding. He is trying to preserve what his people have at that time. He's not at a good place. Let me tell you something. God is not going to call you when you're in your best place. Right? When everything is going perfect. Y'all, I, I tend to, this is the thing that bugs me. She will say, I'm going to wait till I get my life together to start serving. That's going to be forever. Because I've been saved for a long time. I'm still trying to get it together. I'm going to wait till I get my life together. I, you know, I think about that. I think about the, the rich young ruler. Who had everything all together, you would think, right? He's rich. He has money. Everything should be all right. And he comes to God. He says, I want to follow you. And God tells him, well, do this one thing. So all that you have, then follow me. And what did he do? He walked away because what he had was so much. So God saw where he was at in here. And even though he had the outward appearance, he didn't have the heart. You see, the Lord, he goes looking for hearts. And you know what? God will take a broken heart. Any of you out there have a broken heart? Any of you struggling out there? You think God can't use me? God can. You see, the angel, he approached Gideon. And what does he tell him? The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. See, God is pronouncing his victory over Gideon before Gideon has done anything. All we know so far about Gideon is what? That he's pressing at this point. He has not won no victories. He has not fought any battles yet. That tells me that God sees the potential in me and you to be much more than what we think we could be. And then Gideon, he has self-confidence issues. He has self-denial issues, doesn't he? Even though he just pronounced him as a mighty warrior, what does he say? Go back to the scripture and he says, Behold, my family is the least of the house of Manasseh, and I'm the youngest son of my father's house. That's self-doubt. That self-doubt about where I've been through, what my family's been through, self-doubt of who I am. Right? Anybody deal with self-doubt? I do. This is my worthiness. But Daniel says, no, no. No, no. Listen to what I'm telling you. Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Surely I will be with you. So no matter what God called you to and asked you to go through, God's going to be with you. And I don't know how many times you have to hear that before it clicks in your head that you're not alone in this fight. Amen. For some reason, we have to think that I, I got to do it myself. And that's where you get into the problem. Amen. And that's where the enemy beats you. Amen. And here the angel said, I'm going to be with you. You're going to defeat them like you're one man. This army is numerous. The army he's going to go against is numerous. The battles that you fight are numerous, aren't they? They're daily. They're hourly. They're from moment to moment. And just as you, just as you get over one thing, another thing pops up. And then you defeat that one thing, and another thing pops up. Our walk is not easy. What do they call the road for me and you? Is it wide and open, or is it narrow? Narrow. Right? 
Narrow isn't going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult at times. But that's where God builds you as a person. Maybe it's been too many times in our life that God starts building and we start tearing down. Because we don't like what we see. Oh, we're not comfortable no more. God's taking me and you out of our comfort zones. Oh, we're afraid to give up the control of our lives. But if you're sitting here today, where you're at home watching, your life has been bought with a price. It is no longer your own. When you said, Christ, forgive me of my sins, take over my life, you surrendered that. And it belongs to him. Why don't you let him do what he does best? God creates. And if you look at the things out here, you see how great God is. You ever been somewhere out deep in the forest and you think, wow, God is really great. Amen. Amen? There were a few years ago, probably 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. went out to Yosemite and there's just trees and mountains and it's just beautiful. And you sit there and look at that thing and think, wow, this is what God did. How great God is. Amen. But if we put on those same eyes and look at the lives of the people around us that God has touched, we would look at, the li look at what God's done in our lives. We could say the same thing of how great God is. He has done great things. And God doesn't stop there. He keeps going. God doesn't stop until everything is done. And ready and complete let's go back to Gideon and he says to him but the Lord said to him surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midians as one man so Gideon said to him if I have found favor in your sight show me a sign that you will speak speak with me please do not depart from here until I come back and bring out an offering laid before you. And he said, I will remain until you return. Then Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread with the effort of flour. And he put the meal in a basket and a broth in a pot and brought them out to him under the oak and presented it to him. Then the angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat, the unleavened, the unleavened bread and lay it on the rock and pour the broth out. So he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the leavened bread and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed it, consumed the meat and the leavened bread. Then the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon saw that he was, was the angel of the Lord and said, and he said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord said to him, Peace to you, do not fear, you shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and named it, the Lord is peace, and to this day, it's still an opera of the Abyssinites. And what happens here? Give me a sign, Lord. Let me know that it's true. Let me know that you're really calling me. So what does he do? He goes and gets an offering. He brings it, lays it on the rock, and what? The angel touches it and consumes it. This is liquid, poured over meat, poured over bread. Turns into fire. Explain that science to me. Again, but it's how the Lord works. And he consumed it. And at that moment, he realized that it was truly the Lord who was calling him. There are things in mind in your life that we want to know, God, are you really talking to me? Are you really speaking to me? Are you really calling me out? And if you're really listening, and if you're really looking, and if your heart is really in tune, you're going to see the Lord calling you. You're going to hear a word of confirmation, either from the pulpit, when you're reading your Bible, when you're praying, or when you're worshiping, you're going to hear a word of confirmation. Or someone's going to come up to you who's going to tell you, God told me to tell you this. I've been praying for you. And this is what God put in my heart. And you ever been that moment where it just blows your mind because you've been thinking about that and you haven't told no one else. And you've been carrying it in here. And then God tells you. 
And it gives you that confirmation. Let me tell you something this morning, friends. If you're looking for confirmation to go and do, today is that day. This morning is just that morning. God's been calling you and you've been waiting too long. I don't know why you want to keep hiding in there and, 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 and needing that, 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 that press inside there. But yet still sitting there complaining about how the millions the million are taking over you. Or how your problems are overtaking you. And you're sitting there grinding and grinding. Oh Lord, help me get out of here. Help my people, Lord. Help me my family, Lord. Help me in my job. Help me in my home. Help me in my finances, Lord. But yet you won't get out of there when God calls you. And you won't come forward. God has called. And he's calling you the same way he calls Gideon. Oh, mighty warriors. Because how many know in your life today and in this world today, we need mighty warriors. We need valiant warriors. What does a warrior do? A warrior fights. And in this day and age, we need fighters for the Lord. People are going to go out there and go out there and fight every single day. And know it's going to be a fight. But know in their heart and their mind. Just like the, the angel told him, I'm going to go with you. And you're going to overcome them like one man. What happens over there, what you're dealing with, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to help you overcome. I'm going to help you be stronger. Let me ask you, has God helped you before? Amen. Has he been faithful before? Then what makes you think he's going to stop now? He's not. God is not a man. A man may not keep his word. A man may not keep his promise. A man may let you down. But God is not a man. He is so much greater. He keeps his words. He keeps his promises. How do I know? Because he sent his son to fulfill the promise. Amen. And then his son, before he left, he said, "What? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Didn't say we're not going to have issues. We are. But we are called to be doers of the word. And Gideon is challenged here. And the pressure is heavy. Because not only is he fighting for himself, he's got to fight for his family. Not only is he going to fight for his family, he's going to have to fight for his nation, his tribe. That's not like some pressure? Yes. It's the same thing me and you fight for every day. We fight for ourselves. We fight for our families. We fight for those around us. So they may overcome and not be burdened by the enemy. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. But God's with me. Amen. Amen. And when Gideon saw that the angel, when, he, when, when it says right here, when Gideon saw that he was an angel of the Lord, alas, the Lord, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said to him, peace to you. Don't fear. You won't die. Three very important statements, right? Peace to you. How many need peace? Amen. Amen. We need peace. God says, I'll give you peace because you've lived in unrest so long. You see, he's speaking to Gideon this morning. He said, I'm going to give you peace. You need peace in your heart because you see how these people come in and how you're tormented by them. I'm going to give you peace. Not only am I going to give you peace, I'm going to tell you what, don't fear. Don't fear. Be strong. Know that I'm with you. And the other thing he tells him is what? You shall not die. Didn't say you're not going to get hurt. Your feelings may get hurt at times. You may shed a tear. You may feel overwhelmed. But you're not going to die. That's confidence to me. Let me know. I'm going to move forward. I'm gonna move forward. I, I am invulnerable. If God is for me, Amen. who can be against me? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Amen. Nobody can be against you. 
We fight against principalities and powers and dark things in this world. And it's gotten pretty dark lately. But you know what can shine through this dark time? It's this little light of mine. Amen. Doesn't have to burn bright, but you get enough of them and it looks bright enough. Amen. Amen. And what did Gideon do at this point? He stopped right there and he built an altar to the Lord and named it, the Lord is peace. Maybe there's points in our lives we need to stop and look at and build a point. This is where God moved in my life. This is where God made a difference in my life. Is it January 23rd for some of you out there? I pray that it is. That here, today, I'm realizing in my heart that the Lord is peace. Amongst all that's going on in this world, amongst the plague that runs through this world right now, my God is peace. No matter what happens in my life, or what battles that I fight, my God is peace. Amen? Peace does so much for us. People who have no peace, they can't sleep. People who have no, no peace, they deal with things physically inside of them because they're burdened by them, because they have no peace. People who have no peace, they go wander, wander, going around wondering, trying to find peace in other things, in substances, in peoples, in false religions or false ideologies. They try to find a peace there. But you're not going to find it nowhere else but God. Because he is the God of peace. So now this great moment has just happened to Gideon, right? God caught him where he's at. He called him out valiant warrior. He brought an offering and God consumed the offering. And then he spoke to the Lord. And the Lord gave him confirmation. And you think, wow, that's a lot. I got to go home and I got to rest now, Lord. Right? Ooh, Lord, you call me out there. It's, it's been a long, long day, Lord. But the scripture goes on to say, now on that same night, the Lord said to him. Did he wait two or three weeks? No. The Lord called him that same night. Because before he could become a valiant warrior, there are some things he needed to take care of. It reads, now on that same night, he's, the Lord said to him, take your father's bull and a second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altars of Baal, which belonged to your father, and cut down the asher that is beside it, and build an altar to the, to the Lord your God on top of, of this stronghold in an orderly manner, and take a second bull and offer a burnt offering with the wood from the asher which you shall cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord spoken to him, because he was too afraid of his father's household and the men of the city to do it by day, he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose the next morning, behold, the altar of Baal was torn down and asher, which was the, and, and the asher which was which was beside it cut down, and a second bull was offered on the altar which had been built. And they said to one another, "Who did this thing?" They searched about and inquired. They said, "Gideon, the son of Joash, did this thing." Then the men of the city came and said to them, "Bring down your son that he may die, for he torn down the altar of Baal, and he had cut down Asher, which was beside it." Before you move forward, before God calls you, there's some things you need to do. You need to take care of some things at home. Because whose altar was that? It was his father's. There are things in our lives that we need to address first. God's called us to great and mighty things, and you will be a great and mighty warrior. But you need to deal with that home. Right? And what's at home? What's going on in here and what's going on in here? See, there was a false god trying to replace their god. Right? And I got to ask you, did that god help them? No. They were living in caves and hiding and being overtaken by their enemy. He said, before you go do great things, you got to do the small thing. You got to take out those obstacles in your life. The those things that pull you away from God. 
You take away those false things. Because God is truth. And there are false things out there to try to take you away from the Lord. Did you hear me? There are false things out there that try to take you from the Lord. And here Gideon says, go to your father. God told him, go take that down. I want you to knock it down. Pull it down. Cut that wood down. Make it into an altar for me. Move the things that are in your life that don't belong there and put God there. Did you hear me this morning? Remove the things that don't belong there and put God there. Amen. Let him do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. Let him build there. Mm -hmm. Put an altar there for the Lord where you can spend time with him. Spend time reading your word. Spend time praying. Mm -hmm. Spend time worshiping him. You don't need to wait to come to church to do that. Amen. Do you wait to once a week to eat? I sure don't. No. You do it at home daily. That's where the strength is built at. Here's what you get confirmation and reassurance. That God's working in your life. And he went out there and he tore it down. He did exactly as God had told him to do. And what happened? Was everybody happy and celebrating? Were they throwing a party? Great job. Thank you. They did it. They came looking for him. They were going to kill him. That's what it says, right? Because of what he did. But I got to go back to remember what God told him. You will not die. Don't fear. Have peace. And these people here, they were so blinded, so blinded. If you read this, they're so blinded that instead of asking who built this altar for the Lord, they asked who tore down our idols, who tore down our false gods. Instead of, instead of sitting there and falling to their knees and saying, oh my gosh, they built an altar to the Lord. Instead of having that conviction fall upon them like my life isn't right. They lash out. And that may happen to you at times when you're trying to serve the Lord. Because you're trying to build good things and godly things in your life. And people just can't see it. They're too worried about the things that you're tearing down in their life. I'm not trying to tear down things in your life. I'm trying to help you see a better way. And I'm not perfect. I'm like Gideon. I'm the least. But I'm trying. And I'm believing in God. Because he told me he'll bring me through. I'm believing in God that he'll use me one day. I love this story about Gideon. Because it shows his faith. And you can go on and read about Gideon. And what he did. He became a mighty warrior. For the Lord. God helped him get through victories through confusion of the enemy. So instead of letting the enemy confuse you, God confused the enemy. And how awesome is that? And Gideon's father, he stood up and says, But Joash said to them who stood against him, Will you contend for Baal? Or will you, will you deliver him? Whoever will plead for him shall be put to death by morning. But he is God. Let him contend for himself because someone has torn down his altar. Therefore, on this day, he named him Jeroboam, which is to say, let Baal contend against him because he has torn down the altar. That's changing Gideon's name because he has torn down the altars in life. Tear down the things in your life that don't belong there no more. Because your enemy is not going to help you. That false God, those things that you believe in, they're not going to help you. No, Baal or Asher, they, they, it never helped the people. They stayed trapped. They stayed locked up. They stayed in hiding. Yet they still ask God for help. Aren't you glad you have a God that hears? See, he hears your cries. He hears your groanings. 
Here, here's what you don't say, but you carry it in here. Those hurts, those burdens. He knows what they are. And he's going to come to you. He's going to say, Valiant warrior. Now's the time. Have peace. Don't fear. And you're not going to die. God's looking for someone that has a heart that wants to move forward. And Gideon, he realized what God was doing in his life. Friends, you need to realize what God is doing in your life this morning. And you may not be at the best place. You may not be at the right place. And too many times, too many believers I've seen come into this church, another church, they've come in and they've said, I'm, I'm waiting to get my life together. You're going to be waiting a long time. What you should be waiting on is the Lord. Amen. Waiting for Him to start changing things in your life. Amen. Waiting for Him to bring you through the problems. Amen. Waiting for Him to use you as a vessel and as a tool for His purpose, not for your own. That's where we get confused. My purpose and His purpose. See, when I follow His purpose, my purpose falls right in line. Amen. And things work out. God's calling all of us, not the perfect ones, right? I think about when God called the disciples. Were they perfect? No. They were fishermen. Peter and Andrew were out there, casting their nets into the sea. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible says immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then going on, he saw two other brothers, James, uh, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, and John, his brother, at the boat, and with their father Zebedee, with Zebedee their father, men in their nets, and he called them, and immediately they left the boats and their father, father to follow him. God's looking for an obedient heart. I read that part about the, the sons of Zebedee and how they left their father. And I remember another scripture in the Bible where it says, Lord, permit me first to go bury my father. But you said to him, follow me and allow the dead to bury the dead. What's important? So when God calls, you need to move then. See, if you would have said, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you and got into the boat with the other ones. You know what happened on the other side? God worked. As they're getting across the other side, God called in the storm. As they got to the other side, God healed two people. He pulled the demons out of them. You don't know what's ahead of you until you take that step of faith. Until you stop talking about it and stop complaining about it and just start moving forward. You don't need to have a perfect life. You don't need to be in a perfect place. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have the finances, the help, the look, the job to have it all together. You just have to have a heart that's ready. A heart that wants more. A heart that doesn't want to live in a cave or a stronghold no more. Or doesn't want to live in darkness. That doesn't want to hide no more. But a heart that wants to shine for God. So it's time to stop being hearers of the word. Be doers of the word. God is calling me and you to go out there and do. Before we can, we have to be like Gideon and take care of what's inside our own lives. Because I truly believe there's things in our lives that are holding us back from moving forward for God. Until you pull those things down and build something for the Lord, you're always going to struggle. You're always going to question. You're never going to have peace. And you're always going to fear. And you're always going to worry what's going to happen when you die. See, but when you, when you trust the Lord and you serve the Lord and you walk with the Lord and you're obedient and you're a doer of the word, not just a hearer, you have peace. And you don't fear. 
man or things or incomes or anything. And then you don't worry about dying because I know where I will be one day with the Almighty, with Him, where I truly belong. Not this temporary place, but with the Lord. See, living a life like that, it's a life without, again, it's a life of peace. It's a life without fear. And it's a life that's everlasting. Amen. Do you want to have that life this morning? Amen. Are you tired of living the same way you have? Are you tired of, of waiting and waiting and waiting for yourself? Because if you're waiting for yourself, you'll be waiting a long time. But if you're going to wait on the Lord, the Lord's timing is perfect. The Lord comes just at the right time. Again, you won't die. You may get a little hurt. You may get a little banged up. But you won't die. And God will bring you through it. Amen. I mean, you believe that this morning? Amen. I mean, if you believe that this morning, don't be mere hearers of the word, but doers of the word. See, so you're accountable for what you hear. Do something with it. Put it into practice. And preach it to others. Amen. 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 Thank you, friends. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And God used a very powerful um, instrument to bring us his message today. And may the Lord bless Pastor Anthony and all of the work of the Lord which laid before him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, God is good. That's a powerful message for us to listen to, to hear, and to put it into the, our hearts as God renovates things in us. Mm -hmm. Yes, change sometimes makes us try to pull away, but sometimes change is just what we need. Amen? Amen. A lot of us have to get out of our comfort zones. Amen? A lot of us have to get out of the place where I'm not comfortable with something Amen. In order to do what God wants you to do. Because it will be an uncomfortable place. Amen. But it will be the best place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I want to thank um, everybody for their prayers for Sister Martha and I. In this past week. Um, we've gone through a very um, challenging time. You know. And uh, when you tune in um, next week, next Sunday. Uh, we will share our adventure with COVID-19. Amen? Because um, that's what I look at it as, an adventure. And just like in life, many times growing up, I had many adventures. Some of them were scary. Some of them were very dangerous. But you know what? Like Pastor Anthony said today, you will not die. Amen? And uh, as we were sharing this, the year of 2022, the year of newness, well, some new things happened right at the beginning of the year. Amen. And, um, but we had been talking big. Amen. Um, but not big in ourselves. Big in what God and who God is. Amen. Because we're not going to be hiding in the cave no more. We're going to be coming out trusting in the Lord. Amen. And, um, and we did. And we are. And we'll continue to do that. Amen. Amen. But uh, dealing with COVID is an adventure. Amen scary painful challenging um but god can get you even through covid amen, amen. praise god and, and and let you come out on the other side feeling stronger amen, amen. hallelujah so um we've we've been blessed um that god took care of us and uh like i said i'll share next sunday tune in you those on youtube and facebook and instagram that follow Tune in and you'll hear this wonderful story how God brought us through this trying time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Those times when it was just very painful. Amen? Those times when it was very scary. Those times when you even said, Lord, take me home. Amen? But, uh, well, at least on my side there was. <laughs> Um, but the Lord says, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you got work to do. Amen. And, um, and that's the way he made me laugh. Um, 
Um, something um, um, uh, shared as well next week. Uh, my grandson, um, uh, earlier in the middle, well, last year, they took a long trip to um, around the United States. And as they were passing through Texas, they ran into one of the Texas storms. <laughs> and my grandson, in the midst of the storm, I don't know everything, but he blurted out some some real funny words. They actually made me laugh the whole time I was struggling with COVID. Amen. And so I'll share that as well. But God has something good for you. Today, it was a very powerful word. And um, as you let it come into your heart, amen. Don't resist. Trust in God. Amen. And uh, let him do what needs to be done. Amen. God wants to strengthen your faith. Amen. Hello. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Anthony, again, and thank you all again for all of your prayers. Uh, as you can see, we're doing good. We're strong. And yeah, we got the mask, but um, um, we do that today for everybody else. Amen. But we feel good. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and continue on with uh, God's business, and that's the tithes and the offerings of the church. Praise the Lord. And uh, we've got our little assistant here, and if you got your offerings, amen, and we're going to pray for it right now. And don't forget, those of you that uh, are viewing through Facebook or YouTube, um, don't forget, you know, you're part of the church. God has given you a, a heart that's continue to be faithful. Remember your tithes and offerings and to get them to the, to the church. Give us a call and uh, we'll make sure and get that into your account of blessings. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for this time that you've given us to come together. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for keeping us safe, Lord. Thank you for the energy and the health and the blessing that you've given to all of us, Lord. Today we come to give that which is rightfully yours, Lord God, and that is our tithes, Father God. We thank you that you also blessed us tremendously, that we bring besides and above our tithes our offerings of love, and we just thank you for that, Lord God. And we praise you and continue, Lord God, to just, to just confess and believe and know, Lord, that you're in control of all aspects of this ministry and this church. And the financial blessings are abundantly given in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't you know it's time to praise the Lord in the sanctuary of his Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And for those of you that heard me and saw me on Zoom for prayer, and um, and um, Bible study, you know, I didn't sound as good as I sound today, Amen. Um, but God, God makes these things happen. I want to share real quick before we close in prayer. Um, as we were closing in uh, Zoom prayer on Tuesday night, everybody was saying their goodbye, and Brother Anthony, um, he um, he said, Pastor, don't hang up yet. <laughs> And I said, I want to pray for you, Brother Anthony Moreno. And I said, oh, okay, go ahead. So he prayed, and he prayed for God to heal me and for God to touch us, me and Sister Martha. And prayed for the miraculous things, and I know Brother Anthony steps out in faith and believes confidently in, 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 in all of those things, amen? So we just, I said, okay, praise God. If you believe it, I believe it, and I receive it in Jesus' name, amen? Well, that night, um, everything was normal, the prayer, but... That night is when my fever broke. And when that fever broke, I knew that was answered prayer. That was things were going to get better. Amen? That was on Tuesday night. Amen? The, the biggest miracle of our adventure is my, my wonderful wife. She really didn't struggle with any symptoms at all. I was saying, but Lord! <laughs> but... God bless her, and she's a strong woman of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and close in prayer and, uh, and thank the Lord for his wonderful love. Thank you all for being here today. Um, in the next few weeks, we'll get back into our live worship and um, in a different way. Amen? 
And we're probably going to be moving a few chairs back out of here. And, uh, and just, for me, I'm going to play it safe. Amen? And for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, God got some wonderful things planned, and we're going to continue to do great things. Amen? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise offering. <laughs> Father, we thank you today. And we love you today, Lord. You're such an awesome God. Thank you for the strength you give us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that that day, Lord, when you went into Peter's home and his mother-in-law was very sick with the fever, you touched her and you healed her, Lord. And as soon as you healed her, Lord, she jumped out of the bed of sickness and started serving you, Lord. So I thank you that you blessed us in that way through this time. And we'll continue to serve you all the days of our life, Lord. Thank you, Father. And I do thank you, Lord. And I love you, Lord. Continue to keep your protection upon our church, our church family, our families, Lord. And um, praise, praise your holy name, our Father, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Um, and... Um, Praise God. Join us again next Sunday morning here at Unshackle Ministries in the city of Paramount. God loves you. God cares about you. And God is calling you in Jesus' name.